Hey, and welcome to Horse Little Carpentry. So today's video is part three of this series of uh, installing and finishing trim in my old office. So um, part one and two, part one I installed the trim. Part two, I filled all the holes and caulked and got everything prepped and ready for paint. Um, I also have a video that uh, shows me repairing um, the walls, the drywall, there was nail holes and stuff in here. So I'll put links to all those videos below. Um, so this is the final video where I talk about painting. So because this is all new trim, I don't have to do that much to prep it. I've already prepped it basically. Uh, so we're going to get right into the tools and materials I'm going to need to do this and then how I do it. So this is everything I plan on using today. Uh, I actually might not use these brushes, but I just wanted to show you some of what I like to use. Um, I generally always use an angle brush. The two and a half inch brush is my go-to for everything. Uh, I will use a two inch brush when I've got to do something in a smaller space. And um, I think this is a one inch, yeah, one inch brush if I got to get into really small spaces. Um, so I'm using Benjamin Moore Regal Select Semi-Gloss for the trim. Uh, this, you can see on here, says with 8 ounces of Floetrol. So Floetrol is a product that you can add to paint that helps it um, glide a little easier and um, it extends the dry time a little bit so you've got a little bit more time to work with it. So sometimes I put that in my trim paint just to I don't know, it gives me a little better product, uh, a little better finished product. So aside from that, we're gonna need a paint can opener to open the can. You can also use a screwdriver if you don't have a paint can opener. And I will use a paint stair stick. You could also just use a piece of wood or whatever that's not covered in dirt or whatever, just something to stir the paint. Um, I'm gonna just carry a little rag with me just in case, um, a towel. I have this little pad that I use to, to kneel on, but if you don't have a pad, you can use a towel. The towel is also good, so if I have to wipe anything down with a wet rag, I have a towel to dry my hands off. I've also got paper towels in case I have to clean up any mess, and a handy pail bucket. So I'm gonna pour the paint into the handy pail bucket and use this, rather than working straight out of here. We're gonna open up this can. I don't know when the last time this was open, so hoping the paint is still good. Yeah, that's fine. Now you'll see the liquid uh, rises to the top and the solids kind of stay at the bottom. This needs to get mixed up really good to make sure that everything is evenly dispersed. Alright, you can see it's splattered out on me a little bit, so that's exactly why I've got paper towels here. And my little water. Okay, so now I'm just going to scrape that off, get as much paint off there as I can. And wipe it off with my brush. I'm gonna pour this out down here so in case I spill it, I'll get it all in there. So basically, I just pour it out and then I kind of hold it and wipe it with my brush so I don't get a big spill off. Now, when the gallon is brand new, you'll make more of a mess. When there's less pain, it, uh, it's easier to pour out. So you can see that I've poured this plenty of times. I've been doing, using this on my house for a while. Uh, I always like to pour uh, on the face side so that the directions can still be read. A lot of people pour on the direction side so you can see what that is, you know, so you can see what the paint is. But the back of the paint can always says what the paint is. So you don't really need to know this ever again because it says it right here. I'd rather be able to see the directions than to see the face. 
So once that's done, I'm just gonna set my lid on it, not push it down too tight, just wanna keep air from getting in there. Set my paint stick on it, set that out of the way. So if you're doing this on a finished floor, you're gonna definitely wanna use a drop cloth, but this is just plywood subfloor, so I'm not worried about getting any paint on it. Um, some people might think there's a way that you should go left or right. I think whatever feels best for you uh, is the way that you should go. I generally like to start somewhere where there's a seam and then work my way there rather than starting in the middle of a board. So the key to this is always having a wet edge, which means you want the paint to be wet. If you go too slow and it starts to dry and then you go over it, you'll start to see lines. So you want to go as fast as you can, but as nicely as you can too. Now with new trim, I just paint the trim and get it onto the wall and I always cut the wall in afterwards. I find it easier to cut in this line than it is to cut in that line. And sometimes with the baseboards, I'll go back and do that top edge again. But at least with the door trim, I always paint this onto the wall and then I'll cut that in. It's much easier to cut in the wall paint like that than just to try to get in here and paint the edge of this perfectly. So I'm just going to start down here. So there's a couple ways you can do this. I'm going to dip my paintbrush in just a little bit and then I'm going to wipe it off so that there's still paint. I'm not like really wiping it hard. I'm just like just wiping it off so there's no drips coming off. Another way you could do this if, I don't know, your little more advanced technique is to dip it and then tap it on the sides and you'll have more paint on your brush that way. And so. Um, I'm just going to start painting in the direction of the grain of the wood. So the, the wood's going that way, I'm just going to paint that way. Let's see how I came onto this a little bit, which is totally fine. I just need to make sure that I go back and make that grain the same. And so I'll just do that. All right. And now because I don't, I've already painted this door, but I haven't painted the trim. So I'm just going to crack the door a little bit so I don't get a ton of paint on the door. And if I get any paint on it, you just wipe it off. Okay. Now you can tape these off so you don't get paint on them. This paint was already on there from the last time this trim was on. Then I want to just clean up the wall. And then I always want to do one final brush stroke to go through to just carry my brush lines. And I'll just keep working my way up. Alright, so now I'm out in the hallway and I just painted over in here a little bit. I just want to touch that up so there's no drip lines. I'm going to come back through here when I paint the uh, when I paint the outside of the door, and I'll come back in and paint to here. But for now, I'm just going to paint to that line, and I'll also get a small brush and uh, paint around here. But I don't need to worry about that right now. Okay, now when I get up here, I want to go, um, I want to make sure I definitely paint the top of this, because I am like that. I like to make sure I paint all the wood. And it's got to be coated. And so, as I said earlier, I want everything to go with the direction of the grain. So the trim here goes this way. And here it goes that way, there's that seam there. So I'm actually going to paint that seam right in. 
So that when it dries, it actually looks like there's two pieces of wood. And same thing, I'm gonna just paint this edge first. I'm gonna make sure I paint really good on that end grain. Like I said, you can get it all over the wall because we're gonna go back after and cut it in with the wall paint. So, just apply the paint in the direction of the grain. Make sure my edge looks good here. Look at that. So I get my whole outside looking good. And then, like I said, I'm gonna go with the grain. And then I wanna carry that line back through. So there's one long brush stroke. The longer the brush stroke, the better. Nice and slow. There we go. So that's it. So I'm gonna keep doing that around the room. Here's where my foam, foam knee pad comes in handy. All right, so once I got all the paint lathered on there really good, I'm just gonna, again, make my edges look good. And then I'm gonna start with that direction because I've got the seam here, which I'm going to paint in like that. Long brush strokes. There we go. All right, now I'll carry right down. All right, on top of this miter here, I'm also gonna just take my brush and pull it back each direction so that that paint stroke goes right with the miter. And give it one final So here's what everything looks like with one coat. It already looks pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna paint everything again. I'm also gonna probably paint the door uh, just to give it a fresh coat. Um, so I won't show you that, the process of painting the second coat because it is exactly the same as the first coat. So just repeat. All right, so now it's time for cleanup. So what I'm gonna do is take the bucket and I'm gonna wipe off the brush pretty good. And I'm gonna pour out everything that's in there that'll just come out by itself. And then use the brush to pull the rest of it out. Now I wanna get as much paint out of here as I can, so I'm just gonna use the brush and go around, wipe it off, and keep doing that a couple times so that there's no puddles in the bottom so that it'll dry out faster. All right. Close my lid. All right, here we go. And we gotta clean the brush. All right, well thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, as always, give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe and ring that notification bell so you can get notif notified of my new videos. Uh, also, check out all the links below, including 
my website, borsalinocarpentry.com. There you can find my brand new blog where I'm talking about uh, being a small business owner and specifically carpentry, but a small business owner in general. So uh, I think that's it. Also leave me some comments. Uh, let me know what you think about this stuff and uh, I'll see you on the next video.